Before I get started, I, I want to say that I'm here on a mission. I'm, I'm not only am I trying to present stuff to you, but I want something in return. And I'll be describing what that mission is later on in my talk. There's actually two missions. The other mission is I am trying to spread the word about telomere biology as much as I can. Uh, though, still, I'm surprised that 90% of everybody I talk to have never heard of a telomere. And I think telomeres are the most significant discovery in medical research ever. All right, And still, as the world's still just trying to catch on to what's going on. So I want to start off with a slide. We all know that 65 is a new 45. And these people have what appears to be a very successful anti-aging protocol. Okay? They look great. They're 65 years old. And this is everybody's perception of what successful anti-aging is. But when I turn 65, I have an entirely different vision of what I want to be when I'm 65. And that's that. <laughs> So that's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about. That's what my research is all about. And I really believe that this is possible. And I believed it for a long, long, long time. But it's only in the last two years that we've had our best proof of concept that this is not science fiction. This is real. And what I want to do is I want to spend about three minutes just to let you watch a news report from Diane Sawyer where she talks about some researchers at Harvard University using telomere lengthening technology, they've successfully reversed aging in mice. They've turned old mice into young mice. This has been my mission for, since I was 10 years old, to find something like that. I'm, I'm sharing everything I do. The scientists all over the world are doing research based on building on research that I did a long time ago. These scientists at Harvard succeeded it for the first time in the history of the planet of actually reversing aging turning an old mouse into a young mouse. There's been quacks and charlatans been saying they can do this for 4,000 years, but it's never actually been done until now. Nobel Prizes have been awarded. The scientist, Dr. Rhonda Pennell, shortly thereafter was made the head of MD Anderson, the, what the top hospital in the United States. So this is very exciting stuff being done by very, very reputable scientists. And I'm really excited. And you know what? This, this, this experiment suggested that we might actually reverse Alzheimer's. It's, it's these mice, they couldn't remember how to go through a maze when they got old, but suddenly they could remember again. Suggesting that maybe Alzheimer's isn't the loss of memory as much as it's the loss of access to memory. And so this is really exciting. I think Alzheimer's is a disease worse than death, and it'd be great if we could find some way to actually do something about it. These mice also had, you know, they, when they got old, they couldn't sexually reproduce anymore. When they were restored to young mice, they were, they were, having, they were breeding more mice again. It, it's, these, it was successful uh, reproduction. So, so a lot of great things happen with reversing aging here. So <clears throat> the question comes now, do we have to age? Is there any reason why aging even exists in the first place? Well, I don't know. Did you know that there are life forms on this planet that don't age? Lobsters, they have no aging process, no detectable aging process. And it's only been in like the last 100 years that people have even been wondering, okay? Before 100 years ago, nobody cared. But about 100 years ago, people started saying, well, I wonder how long some of these animals will live. So they start just watching to see how long they live. And some animals just are showing no signs of aging. And lobsters are one of them. Well, why is that? Okay, that's a really important question. Why is it we're Asian and they're not? What can we do to be more like lobsters? The same is true for tortoises, clams, some whales, some fish, some birds. These animals, people are really surprised they're not showing any signs of aging. Well, why is that? Also, our reproductive cells. Even though we age, our reproductive cells do not age. And that's why our children are born young. Because if, if our reproductive cells age too, and our reproductive cells I'm defining as the cells that are involved in making our sperm and our egg cells. And these cells are passed on from generation to generation. 
if you think about it, <clears throat> you came from cells from your parents, your parents came from cells from your grandparents, on and on and on. It's, there's a s lineage of cells that have been dividing for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And you're just part of that. And these cells don't show, show any signs of aging. Why is that? That's what I actually was asking 20 years ago when I first got into telomere biology. Why, is, why aren't these cells aging? So I'm William Andrews. I am founder, president, and CEO of a company called Sierra Sciences that is 100% devoted to figuring out how to stop the aging process and reverse it in humans. We're located in Reno, Nevada. I have been in this business, I've been in the biotech business for 32 years, and I've been in telomere research for 20 years now. And I right now have 45 US issued patents on the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about today. So I don't actually refer to it as aging anymore. I used to say I'm doing anti-aging research, but it's the scientists all over the world that have been following up on my research have been showing that practically every disease you've ever heard of is associated with telomere shortening. Not only do we have the potential of possibly reversing aging, we have a potential possibility of reversing everything and decreasing the chances of people getting practically every disease. So I don't call it aging anymore, I call it telomere shortening disease. Now here's a problem. Is it a disease if everybody has it? So a lot of people are get critical of me saying, you can't call that a disease, because that's normal. Everybody has it, so it's not a disease. Well, my answer is, when we cure it, you'll call it a disease. So until then, I'm gonna keep calling it a disease, because I know we're gonna cure it. So this is something you've heard me say a lot, a lot of you at least. Uh, bad things happen when telomeres get short. It's my message to everybody. It's, there's nothing wrong with a long telomere, but there's all kinds of problems with short telomeres. And who here, raise your hand if you know what a telomere is. Okay, so there's a lot of people that don't know. So now I'm gonna define what a telomere is so that you can get caught up, because it's a very, very important thing. So I think it's discovery of what telomeres do is what I think the biggest medical breakthrough of all time. And, and only bigger ones are gonna come after this, through this telomere biology. So let's focus on this word telomere. To describe what a telomere is, we need to zoom in on a human being. And when we zoom in, we find that a human is made up of a hundred trillion cells. And most of the theories on why we age say that we age because our cells age. So if we could find a way to prevent the aging of our cells, that would probably prevent the aging of us, ourselves. Let's zoom in even further. Inside every cell is a nucleus. And if we zoom in on the nucleus, we find that the nucleus contains chromosomes. Chromosomes are where your genes are. They give you some of us blonde hair, some of us black hair, make some of us tall, make some of us short. <coughs> A chromosome is like a long shoelace, okay? But the shoelace is like a string of beads. And the beads are called bases. So a typical chromosome is about 100 million bases in length. Long, long string of beads. The telomeres are the very tips of this chromosome, shown here in yellow. Excuse me. And the telomeres are only about 15,000 bases in length at least when we're first conceived. But when our cells divide, our telomeres shorten. And therein lies the problem. Every time our cells divide, our telomeres get a little bit shorter. And it's, it's because of the lack of the ability of our cells to duplicate the very tips of the chromosome. So every time a new chromosome is made, it is shorter. When a cell divides, the new cells have to have all the same contents of the original cells. So everything has to be duplicated in the cell before the cell can divide. And when the chromosome divides, the chromosome ends up being a little bit shorter. Okay, so when we are, so when we're conceived, it's 15,000 bases, cells start dividing. When we're born, the telomeres have shortened down to 10,000 bases. Then as our cells start to divide even further and we grow up, 
our telomeres continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And when they get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function, and that's when we typically die of old age. So let's go over that again. We are conceived at 15,000 bases, we are born at 10,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. This is the only clock of aging that's ever been discovered in humans. I can take blood from any of you. I can measure the length of your telomeres, and I can tell you how old you are. And more importantly, I can tell you how long it'll be before you die of old age, just from the length of your telomeres. <clears throat> and there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. Telomeres shorten at about 50 to 100 bases a year in the healthiest of people. No matter how healthy you are, you can't get it to shorten slower than 50 to 100 bases a year. There are things you can do to accelerate the shortening, okay? Smoking, obesity, stress, all these things can cause the generation of free radicals and inflammation, which are known to cause accelerated telomere shortening. But we can do things about those. We can quit smoking, we can lose weight, we can meditate to reduce stress. All these things have been shown to be successful ways of actually decreasing the rate of telomere shortening. But that's what it's all about. We are all suffering from telomere shortening disease. I want to congratulate my colleagues that I worked with 20 years ago, Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider, and Jack Stosak, for being awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for this research. Uh, they had been involved in the research for 10 years before I even got involved. And because of all the pioneering work, when people started realizing what a significant thing was occurring in this telomere biology research, the Nobel Prize Committee decided somebody needs to get a Nobel Prize. And they war awarded the people that started it all. <clears throat> so congratulations to Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider, and Jack Stosak. Now I was awarded second place for United States Inventor of the Year. Second place because that was the same year that the HIV protease inhibitor was discovered and they got first place and that was a very significant discovery. But I was awarded second place <clears throat> for discovering a way to prevent the telomere shortening. And that's through the discovery of this enzyme telomerase, which my team at Geron Corporation discovered in the mid-1990s. What this shows, the green squiggle line here is a DNA molecule, shown as a double helix. And telomerase is that factory-looking thing that binds to the very tip of the chromosome, and what it does is it lengthens the telomeres. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of telomere shortening as a ticking of a clock. Okay, so we got a clock. Every time a cell divides, it, the clock ticks once. Divides again, it ticks again. Divides again, it ticks again. So that's what's happening in our cells. It's a very accurate timepiece of aging. Now in our reproductive cells, the only cells that, that this enzyme is found in, the, clock, the cells divide, the clock ticks, the telomerase pushes it back. Ticks, those cells divide again, it ticks again, the clock, the telomerase tick, tick, uh, pushes it back, and again and again. And so <clears throat> we have actually found that when we overproduce telomerase in cells, it actually starts ticking backward in the other direction. And this is, as you'll see, how the mice actually got younger by actually overproducing telomerase in mice and getting them to go younger. So it's, as I said, it's found only in our reproductive cells. And for this discovery, a lot of things happen. They, Popular Science did an 11-page article about me and my research uh, just about two years ago. This is a man who would stop time. Uh, I was on the Today Show. I'm right now, well, maybe up until just two days ago, I'm in Men's Journal Magazine. They're talking about my research uh, in August 2013, but apparently I, some people have told me that the September issue is now on the stands. This is right after celebration, isogenic celebration. I went to the airport. And somebody comes running up to me and says, hey, I found this magazine with you in it. Can I get a picture of it? And so they took this photograph and sent it to me, so I thought I'd show that picture. I've been in several documentaries, one called Don't Grow Old, the other one called Immortal. Immortal actually won an Emmy. Uh, it all, it's all about anti-aging research involved in a lot of different labs. 
but both documentaries include other scientists too talking about their research in anti-aging. And there's a documentary underway right now where I'm the key focus. My research is the key focus of the documentary. It's being made for HBO. This is a scene just taken two days ago. Me and Aubrey de Grey. Anybody here know who Aubrey de Grey is? Okay, I thought he was, I thought everybody knew who Aubrey de Grey is. He's a very outspoken anti-aging person that's been all over the news for 10 years now, always claiming that he's going to be living to be a thousand years old. Okay, very obsessed with curing aging, kind of person I, I share a lot in common with. Okay, so despite his long hair and long beard, we have a lot in common. And this is us being filmed on HBO, standing down in a creek in Los Gatos, and I'm still suffering from the mosquito bites that I got. Uh, and he's drinking a beer, and what do you think I'm drinking? An isogenic shake, yes. So watch for it, it should be on HBO, first quarter of 2014, uh, and it might be on PBS. If it comes out on uh, HBO, it'll be in January. If they get it on PBS, which has a, a much bigger audience, it'll be in March of 2014. So look for that. Another thing that's happened is that the state of Nevada, my company is located in Reno, Nevada, declared September the 2nd, 2nd to 8th as Telomere Research Week because of all the research we're doing in Nevada. Now, what's the point of me showing all this stuff? I'm trying to point out that something really amazing is happening here with telomere biology. A lot of people are getting very excited about the fact this is real science that really has the potential of actually making us young and healthy again for those of us that are not young and healthy now. I can see a few people look very young and healthy already. But <clears throat> this is all happening and it's happening in isogenics. Okay, so I've had a lot of different companies. So it's not just <clears throat> me with isogenics. It's, it's like I am glad to be with isogenics. I, I, I've been so, I've, I've been recruited by several other multi-level marketing companies, supplement companies. I've never been very impressed with their science or their ethics. But since I've become associated with isogenics, I've been just amazed at the quali high quality of their scientists and the high ethics of everybody, including the Coovers, Kevin Adams, Suk Cho, all the key people in isogenics. And I'm very happy to be with this company. And I am really, right now, devoted to keeping this research within isogenics. Even though I'm not an isogenics employee, I have my own company, I'm looking for telomerase inducers, I just find I want everything to be funneled through isogenics. And so things are only, we've only scratched the surface. The best is yet to come, stick with it, okay? So <clears throat> one of the reasons why I call it telomere sh shortening disease is because telomere shortening has now been shown to be the cause of a lot of different things, okay? Cancer, for example. It used to be thought 15, 20 years ago that if we turned telomerase on in, in cells, uh, that, would cause, uh, uh, that would cause everybody to get cancer. Well, now we know that short telomeres cause cancer. And so when telomeres get short, think of that shoelace that I was talking about. When the caps of your shoelaces get short, your, your shoelaces fall apart. When your telomeres get short, your chromosomes start falling apart. They start having chromosome rearrangements and mutations. I can actually look in the microscope at cancer cells and I can see the rearrangements that have occurred. And these rearrangements are what cause the cancer. They cause changes in the gene expression patterns resulting in cancer. And when telomeres get short in your immune cells, you have a decreased risk of ability to fight the cancer if you already have it. And so cancer is, is something that is very much caused by short telomeres. Something else is cardiovascular disease. We've done a lot of work looking at cells lining plaques and stuff like that, and we find that the, these cells called endothelial cells have short telomeres. AIDS. When a person gets infected with the AIDS virus, they don't usually realize it at first. It takes years before it starts showing up. That's because what the AIDS virus does is it causes accelerated telomere shortening of the immune cells. And as a result, the immune cells eventually die of old age, even though the person is still young. And when the immune cells die, then the person's open, they have no protection against any kind of infection or anything. 
and they get all kinds of diseases, including cancer. And the best, most notably is Carposi sarcoma, a certain type of cancer. So if we could find a way to prevent telomere shortening, AIDS patients could live normal lives, even though they'd still be infected with the virus. And people with cardiovascular disease would have a decreased problems with heart disease, and people have decreased risk of cancer. Same is true for Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's have been, people with Alzheimer's have been shown to have short telomeres in their immune cells, their astrocyte cells, cells in the brain called Schwann cells. These are things that are going to be really important. If we can increase the length of those, those telomeres in those cells, there's a chance, based on the mouse data, that we could actually reverse Alzheimer's. Osteoporosis, same thing. There's hundreds and hundreds of diseases. In fact, I'm not aware of a single disease anymore that hasn't been shown to be affected by telomere length. Now, there's also other techniques and tools and stuff related to telomeres that are aging that are important, and stem cells. We've all heard of stem cell technology. We know in order to get stem cell therapy, they have to remove stem cells from your gut or their bone marrow, your bone marrow. Then that's a, the cells they take out is a mixture of a lot of different types of cells where the stem cells are going to be a small population within those, all those cells. They have to clean up the cells, and then they have to divide the cells to make a whole lot of stem cells and then inject those back into you. But if you've understood what I've been saying, cell division causes telomere shortening. So when people take the stem cells out and then grow them in that culture, those cells are getting shorter telomeres, and they're getting older. So when they're injected back into you, your own stem cells are now older than you are. And so what's happening is a lot of, like, a lot of old people can't get stem cell therapy to work because the telomeres are too short to allow enough cell division to get to the point where they can be injected back into you. And then the, where it does work, people are finding that their, their tissues that have been replaced with stem cells are dying of old age 15 years later, even though they're still young. So this is a major problem in the stem cell field, and they're looking to us right now to figure out a solution to that problem. Skin care. Wrinkles, age spots, all of that's been shown to be caused by short telomeres. It causes changes in gene expression patterns of collagen, elastin, collagenase, elastinase. These things result in wrinkled skin. Lengthening the telomeres should reverse the skin, and we've already done that with human cells grown in petri dishes. Old cells, we've lengthened the telomeres, then grew it into skin on the back of mice, and showed that old skin started looking like young skin and started behaving in every way like young skin. Pets. I mean, a lot of us here have dogs, cats, horses. All those animals have been shown to age by telomere shortening. This is a big field. Of, wouldn't it be nice if we could make our dogs and cats stay young and healthy for longer? It's, it's so great when they're young, but then they get old, and boy, we have to care for them, and it's sad and stuff like that. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do something to extend the lifespan and health span of our pets? And this is something we've shown that dogs, cats, and horses age by telomere shortening. Research in the labs, people doing medical research run into problems of getting their cells to grow because of telomere shortening. Having a way of preventing telomere shortening would help them. And then, as we already said, aging in general is going to be something that we can uh, control by uh, keeping telomeres long. So the next question is, we said that telomerase is found in our reproductive cells. What happens if we produce telomerase in all of our cells? That's what I'm trying to do. Well, that's what lobsters have already figured out. Lobsters have telomerase turned on in all their cells, no telomere shortening at all. And that was published just a few years ago, showing that the reason why the longevity of lobsters is so long is it's linked to ubiquitous telomerase expression. Ubiquitous means all over the place. Now, remember that there was also people that used to think that producing telomerase in your cells would cause cancer. Well, we now know that it does the exact opposite. And that was proven here because lobsters don't get cancer. Lobsters have a very low incidence of cancer. You, cancers are caused by mutations. So even with long telomeres, you can still get mutations until we get cancer, but at a lot reduced rate. So I want to turn us all into lobsters. And the same is true for all those other animals, the, the tortoises, the clams, the whales. They all have telomerase turned on in all their cells, and they don't have telomere shortening. 
And this is why they don't have any detectable aging process or terrible health problems. Well, my company, Sierra Sciences, Reno, Nevada, founded in 1999, is 100% devoted to finding ways to turn the telomerase gene on in all the cells of our body. And to have, it, have what happened in those mice that was done, studied at Harvard, have the same thing happen with us. Have our, have our cells become younger and everything about us become younger. So we're, we're in Reno, Nevada. We're searching for telomerase inducers that stop or reverse telomere shortening in humans and therefore stop and reverse aging. One of the best things that happened during this research, I've been around for 15 years, but in the last three years, I've been collaborating with John Anderson. There's a poster over here that you can see us <laughs> thinking about what we're doing. Uh, but we are really focused on finding, we're working together, we're finding, looking for natural products that will and turn on the telomerase gene in all our cells. And I will tell you right now, when I first met John Anderson, I thought it couldn't be done. I thought it had to be a synthetic chemical, had to be a pharmaceutical drug, because I thought there's no way a plant extract would ever have anything potent enough to reverse aging. The logic I used to use is if, if, if it did, wouldn't there be people already walking around on the planet now that weren't aging because they're eating that plant? Well. It turns out you can't just eat a plant. It also depends on how you process the plant, how you prepare it, how you do the extractions. There's a lot of things that have to happen in order to make these anything work in a plant. And John Anderson is the world's expert at doing that. So there's never been more energy anywhere on this planet since what, than when John Anderson and I started working together on this project. And we have made major, major progress. This is pictures of my lab, John Anderson has labs just like it. We're all focused on finding ways to lengthen telomeres. And here's how we're doing it. <clears throat> I want you to remember that telomerase is a gene. And I was saying that genes are on chromosomes. This gray bar is an example of one of the chromosomes. Just like the genes that make our hair color and our eye color, telomerase is produced by a gene in our cells. Okay, so next to every gene is a regulatory element. This is like an on-off switch, just like the light switches on the wall over there. You can turn it off and it'll turn the gene off. You can turn it on and it'll turn the gene on. So in our reproductive cells, the gene is turned on so that our cells are producing telomerase and keeping the telomeres long. In every other cell of our body, there's a protein that binds to that regulatory element and shuts it off. And that protein is called a repressor. So what John Anderson and I are trying to do is we're looking for natural products that will get inside our cells, bind to that repressor, and dislodge it, and allow the telomerase gene to turn on and lengthen our telomeres. And if you decide for some reason that you don't want your telomeres getting longer anytime, you can just quit taking the product, and that repressor will go right back and shut it off. So it's not a, it's not a decision that you have, it's going to be permanent if you decide you don't want to do it later on. So it's like a dimmer switch. <clears throat> Instead of a, just a switch, we find that some things will turn on telomerase just a little, some things will turn it on a lot. And we are continually testing more and more plant extracts, looking for things that turn it on more and more and more. This is an example of data here. Now, we, before I met John Anderson, we'd already found synthetic chemicals that when we add it to human fibroblast cells grown in culture, will turn on the telomerase gene. Unfortunately, these synthetic chemicals are a little more toxic than you would like to take, and it would require at least 15 years of FDA clinical studies before they could ever be on the market. And so it would, even though I didn't believe we could ever find a natural product that would be something like that, uh, I was hoping that maybe we would. Okay, so what's happening here is we have, we do everything in quadruplicate or in eight, eight times. So this is eight different Petri dishes that have been treated with one of our synthetic chemicals as a positive control. And the red bar just shows that, when the, that 24 hours after we added the synthetic chemical to the cells, 
the telomerase gene turned on. And for those that are familiar with this kind of technology, what we're using is real-time PCR to detect the telomerase gene. The next eight samples are samples where there was a negative control, just something that doesn't work, just to verify that the assay is working. The yellow bars you can ignore for right now, those are just internal controls that we use for testing other things that are not relevant here. But those are the controls, and then most of the samples look like this. No red bars at all. So it's very rare when we find something that actually will induce the production of telomeres. And this is an example of two hits that we found. This is a more common hit, low level expression, uh, worked in three out of the four, uh, but it's still a hit. It's, we call it a weak hit. But we did find a few hits that were almost as strong as one of our best synthetic chemical hits. This is what I said was impossible. Uh, John Anderson is amazing. He's, he's, he knows how to process these samples. We, these are plant extracts. They have this FDA rating of called GRAS, G-R-A-S, which means that they're already generally regarded as safe. They don't need any FDA approval. People have been eating them for 10,000 years already, okay? It's just that now we have to learn how to eat the right amounts and how to have it processed correctly so that it works inside of our bodies. But what we've done is we've found about, I'd say up to about 15 different plant extracts. Here we're doing them in quadruplicate. That's why you see four bars. We have found about 15 different plant extracts when added to human cells in a petri dish will cause the production of, of telomerase. And all of those get mixed together in product B. And that's what product B is. And product B keeps getting better and better because we are continuing to screen samples. John Anderson sends us more samples every week. We are always finding stronger samples and those get put into new bottles of product B to make different generations. So you've seen the first generation, the second generation, we're on the third generation right now and the fourth generation should be coming out pretty soon. But I still feel like we've only scratched the surface. I think we are going to make tremendous progress over the next year, maybe a few years, where we're going to get more and more potent. It's all going to happen here in isogenics, nowhere else. There's, there isn't any other science going on like this anywhere in the world. Uh, because of the fact that everybody thought that telomerase was going to cause cancer 15, 20 years ago, nobody went into competition with us. And because of all the cancer research I had before I did the tel telomere biology stuff, I knew that this wasn't going to cause cancer, and so I proceeded to start Sierra Sciences to do all this work. Now we're 15 years ahead of the rest of the world. Nobody has any chance of competing with us. So all the other companies that are making, making uh, telomerase inducers, uh, they're either copycats. I mean, at least one of them have some. I, I was involved before, with, I, before I ever heard of Isagenics. I was involved in one company. So there's at least one company out there that has some legitimate stuff. But we were trying to make really much better stuff than them. Uh, but the, the, there's copycats out there that have no way of testing their things. We have tested some of them. They don't work. Uh, but it's because they don't have John Anderson and they don't have me, okay? The John Anderson, you have to be John Anderson to prepare these things correctly. They're not preparing them correctly, so these other copycat products absolutely do not work. Uh, product B is the thing that works and it's cheaper than anything else, and, and I can really only, I, I gotta always be worried about compliance rules with isogenics and not say anything I shouldn't, but let's say it is product B works and it's cheaper than anything else you can, you can get. So that's where I wanna now turn towards my mission, why I'm here, what I'm pleading with everybody to help me with. <clears throat> I am trying to accelerate product B research. It's going too slow in my opinion. Okay, I say, it was, what did I just say a few minutes ago? In a few years, we're going to have something really, really potent. Well, a few years is a long time. I want to get it done faster. You also heard, well, okay, I, was, I thought it was going to be another slide. You've also heard that we have clinical trials underway, it's clinical studies, to, to verify that, that product B is lengthening telomeres. We can do it in, feature, in cells in a petri dish, but it's really hard to do it in, in humans, to actually take blood and show that, to, that that product B is actually making telomerase to lengthen telomeres. And the reason why it's hard is because we're so far ahead of the rest of the world. 
nobody's created tools for actually measuring telomeres that are precise enough. So one of the things that I want to start doing is I want to start developing these tools at my company so that we can start monitoring the progress of product B. But I want to continue to make pro better and better product Bs and I want to complete the in vivo studies. Now I should say that a lot of the in vivo studies have been very positive. Okay, we do have data showing that product B does protect telomeres. Okay, and by protection I mean, remember I was saying that telomeres shorten about 50 to 100 bases per year even if you're the healthiest of individuals? Well, it shortens even faster if you have stress problems, uh, or, uh, oxidative stress, or the kind of stress your boss gives you, or uh, inflammation. These things will all cause accelerated telomere shortening. Product B has been shown to prevent that. Okay, so that's what we call telomere protection. The clinical studies that we haven't been able to complete yet have been showing that and in addition to doing that, product B also lengthens telomeres. And the only reason we haven't been able to do that is because we can't find anybody that can measure the length of telomeres very accurately. They can do it in large population studies, they just can't do it in individuals and small groups. So, we're so those are the two things we want to do. And the way that I think we got to go about doing this is to push the sales of product B because every time a product, a bottle of product B gets sold, a portion of the profits goes directly towards our research. And I can guarantee every penny of that is going to be spent on research in my lab and John Anderson's lab. <clears throat> and I want you to think about what's going on here. Okay, so in the middle of this infinity symbol, I have a dollar sign and I have a B. The dollar sign is the money everybody's making and the B is for product B. Okay, so I want to see, I want to do whatever I can to help you all improve your sales of product B. That's going to lead to more profits, more money, the dollar sign is going to get bigger. That's going to put more money into our research. With more research, we're going to make better product B, or get better ingredients for product B, and that's going to give you a better product B to help sell to other people. Okay, this is going to continue on. That's going to, because it's going to be better, it's going to help increase sales even further. And more profits. Dollar sign is going to get bigger, more research, more money is going to be spent on research, better product B, and we're going to have even a better product B. I, I just want that, this is going to happen anyway. I just want to see it happen a lot, lot faster than it is right now. So I want to push sales of product B as much as I can. So I want everybody to invite me, well, I want to spread the word, but I want everybody to invite me to speak to isogenics groups, okay, because I want, this is my mission, that's why I'm here today, I want to get everybody on board that it isn't just product B and making some money and being healthy, it's also contributing towards the research to make the biggest thing that's ever going to hit this planet, okay, when we can get some product B ingredients that are strong enough to actually stop telomere shortening and reverse it, we're going to be just like those mice that got younger. And that's really going to happen. It's just a question of how soon can it happen. So invite me to speak to your groups. Talk to other people about getting me to come and speak to your groups. Uh, that's what I want to do to help promote this. I also want to start speaking to, uh, I've already been doing a lot of this, but I want you to invite me to non-isogenics functions. If you're part of a running club or a sports car club or a uh, horse business or dog shows or anything like that, think of anything where there's speakers that, even if it's just for entertainment, I need to network. I need to tell the world, look at this. We have something amazing coming on here. I need to get in front of large audiences and get everybody excited about telomeres because that's just going to spread the word even further. Networking works in an exponential way, we just got to get it kick-started. Kick Excuse me. So I want to do that. Now, thirdly, I want to encourage all of you to start speaking. I've never had a goal of becoming worldly famous for curing aging. What I really want to do is I want to cure aging and become a very wealthy nobody. Okay. So I am not out to try to uh, <clears throat> be a big name. I would gladly 
train everybody else to be better speakers than I am on the subject of telomere biology. And I am making my slides available to everybody, okay? I've, hopefully, I, I hope they had enough business cards. Did people get copies of my business card? And if you don't, I think we ran out. Uh, right, but uh, there's my contact information on there. I recommend that you contact me by email or to my business number, okay? Probably it's not best to use my cell number or my text number because if you send an email or to my uh, work number, then I have assistants at work that can help get these things to you, no charge, okay? They'll just send you the PowerPoint presentations you can use, and that includes these slides of zooming in on the human being and the telomeres moving. And if some of you have seen the brick lane slides, which I'm not gonna show today, that includes those, anything you need to help, do it, help to promote product B. And, and I'll even come and I'll show you how to give the presentations. I'll teach you how to do that. I just want to spread the word as much as possible. And that's this whole new mission of mine only started at Celebration. It, it started because I was just devastated when I heard, when I saw the data from our clinical study showing that the data was all over the place. The people that are trying to measure telomeres just couldn't get any consistency to the results and the data was completely inconclusive. And I know that my lab could develop pr protocols for doing that. And my lab can also develop protocols where we can take blood and just measure telomerase activity. Not just telomeres, but actually the ac telomerase activity itself. If we could get these things set up, we could do it. But the reason we haven't done it already is because there's just not enough funding. So we need more funding. I think the funding is going to come from product B sales and the royalties that we get. Thank you. There is one other program that we've initiated, and that's just getting donations. So if people are interested in donating to this research or know of others that are interested in donating to this research, we have now created a donate button. This is our website, www.sierrasci.com. On the top right, we have a donate button. <clears throat> you can click there. Now, this is brand new. It's not, it's not tax deductible at the moment because even though this is a major disease we're all suffering from, they only consider the diseases of the less fortunate, you know, when it's a rare disease, to be something that's considered to be tax deductible. Just because we all suffer from it, we're not all less fortunate, <laughs> essentially. Okay, now, remember the picture I told you of the HBO video? Well, Aubrey de Grey, he heads up a foundation, nonprofit foundation, for raising money for companies like mine and for research labs to do research on anti-aging. And his company is called SENS, S-E-N-S, called Strategies for Engineered Negligible Senescence is what that stands for. He also has a donate button on it. And he says that if you donate there and say that this is money for Bill Andrews' research, he will get it to us and it, he said he, he'll make it so that it can be tax deductible. So that's in the progress right now, but uh, it should be just in a few days if it's not already been set up. So that's underway. The point is, it's all about the telomeres. Everything about us is about telomeres. Not just aging, everything about our health is about telomeres. And Isagenix knows that. Every product that Isagenix has is connected to telomeres, not just product B. Like I was, I was mentioning that obesity causes accelerated telomere shortening. I don't know a better product than, Isa, than the Isagenix Cleanse for helping you lose weight. And then combine that with the Isoline Shake. Yeah, the Isoline Shake, you have <clears throat> the best, the most uh, nutritionally dense food on the planet, which will help you keep the weight off while you're trying to cleanse and lose weight with the cleanse. These are really good things to help you lose weight, which will help you reduce your rate of telomere shortening. Now there's also the kind of uh, stress that your boss gives you, okay? I don't know what, I don't know if there's a name for that kind of stress, because there's also oxidative stress, which is different. But there's been studies, especially some done by the Nobel Prize winners, showing that caregivers of Alzheimer's patients, not the Alzheimer's patients themselves, they, they weren't looking at them, they were looking at the caregivers. The caregivers are under a lot of stress taking care of Alzheimer's patients. 
their telomeres are shorter than their friends at the same age just because of all the stress. So if you, any of you are taking care of somebody, you gotta remember to take care of yourself too because you're accelerating your aging just from all the stress. Or just take Ionic Supreme. Ionic Supreme is the best thing on the plant for reducing that kind of stress. It's got things called adaptogens in it that are really, really powerful. I'm, I'm, so, I'm addicted to that stuff. Uh, I, I've become a big fan of all the Isogenics products. Uh, they don't pay me anything to say that. I'm just, I just love them all. I think of the world of the scientists that invented these things. I think they're really great products. Um, but like if I can't sleep at night because I'm really stressed about something going on at work, I just have a shot of Ionic Supreme and I'm, I'm out. Okay, if I'm traveling a lot and, and people are losing my luggage and, and people are calling me when I'm trying to push three suitcases one place to another and uh, rental cars are behind schedule, I just take some Ionic Supreme and I feel a lot better. Okay, and then there's, of course, product B. Now, Ageless Essentials, which you include product B, that also includes the right amounts of vitamin D, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. I've mentioned those before as things that, that can help prevent inflammation and, and free radical damage of chromosomes and telomeres. So you have everything right there. It's the best system on the planet for protecting your telomeres. Then there's also, I mean, I don't know if most of you know, I'm an ultra marathon runner, and actually I'm gonna show you something too that'll make you believe it. Um, and so I'm really into sports drinks and stuff like, especially recovery drinks. I think this new Isoline Pro that Isogenic sells is the best recovery drink on the planet. It's got more protein and it has all the other ingredients that help protect your telomeres too. So this is something I'm a really, really big fan of and it tastes really good too. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's, the power of telomeres. Everything's about telomeres. And what I want to show you right now is a video that I'm very excited about because I was able to do something just last year that I thought I could never do. But I think it's all because of everything I've been doing to protect my telomeres, especially since getting on board with Isogenics. A lot of you heard that I ran a race last year in the Himalayas of northern India. It was 138 miles nonstop at 18,000 feet elevation. Okay, really, really hard to do, and you have to really be healthy, and yet it's hard to qualify and everything for this. HBO went and filmed me doing this race, and that's gonna be part of the documentary that's coming out in 2014. But a few days before, I said I was gonna do my last training run before the race, and it was gonna be a very special training run. Okay, so the race, the training run, they filmed the training run, and then they're actually gonna have this part of the documentary, so that you'll see that they've done some special things with it. It started at 11,000 feet. Those stairs was a thousand foot climb, up to 12,000 feet at the top of this. It's a place called Shante Stupa in a city called Leh in India, and it's, it's a, just an incredible stairs to look at the bottom of these things and just to be able to run up all that. And that was my test. I was gonna do it the day before, or a few days before the race, just to make certain that I was ready for this race. And I did do the race. I, I finished the race and it was 138 miles long. It took me 51 straight hours to do it nonstop. That's all day, all night, all day, all night, and three more hours. And I'm the oldest person that's ever finished that race. And I beat. <laughs> I beat a lot of people a lot younger than me. So my company, Sierra Sciences, our motto is cure aging or die trying. That's why I said I'm gonna finish this race or die trying because that's part of our model. Cure aging or die trying, thank you very much. For more information, go to www.cureagingordietrying.com.